Hey everybody, so good to see everyone today. We're going to be taking a look at nationalism in the Middle East today. So to get started in history, the uh, last time there was a um, homeland for the Jewish population in the world was back in biblical times. And that was around the Mediterranean in the land of Israel. Now, there was a great dysphoria and the Jewish population basically spread throughout Europe and throughout the world. Now, after the events of the Holocaust in World War II, and even before World War II, there was a movement called Zionism. And it was a movement in 1890, and it was to promote the establishment of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The person who started it was Theodore Herzl. And he wanted a creation of a Jewish state in Israel, a homeland for Jews. Now, the Jews believed that Palestine was their original homeland and they had the rights to the land. After the Holocaust, large numbers of Jews moved to Palestine. And in 1947 and in 1948, finally, Jews were given parts of Palestine and they renamed it Israel. In 1948, Israel was given full independence. And the day they got independence, they were attacked by a large number of Arab states. The Belfour Declaration. This declaration sort of made it official that the land of Palestine was going to be partitioned and set up as a homeland for Jewish settlers. Now, after World War I, the British and the French controlled the Middle East. The Jews wanted a state, and the Arabs you know, feared that all the Jews coming in would basically end up taking over their land. Now, Britain tried to please both sides with the Balfour Declaration. So both sides, Arab and Jews, could not live together. Britain decided to partition Palestine or divide it and make a separate homeland for Jews and a separate area for Palestinians. And this is going to be a dispute that's even carried on today. Who's in control of the land? Now, in 1947, Great Britain basically started letting large, large numbers of Jewish people migrate to newly set up Israel. And they moved by force the Palestinian Arabs out of their homeland. This is going to cause a big problem. And the Jews definitely agreed to the plan. The Arabs did not. Now, in 1948, Britain withdrew. The Jews proclaimed Israel an independent state in 1948. And the United States and the Soviet Union both recognized Israel as an independent state. Now, the Arab nations did not recognize Israel. They attacked Israel. Now, in 1948, Israel fought a war of independence. Arab forces from Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Iraq, and Lebanon all attacked Israel that immediately after independence. Israel won that war. And then, once it won the war, it took even more land and gained half of Jerusalem. And that's going to, you know, cause even more controversy today. From the 1950s to the 1980s, Israel's been attacked many times during the Cold War. And almost each time Israel's attacked, they take more and more land. During the Cold War, the United Nations decided to split up Palestine into an Arab state and a Jewish state, Israel. Soon after Israel was formed, all the Arab nations attacked Israel in 1948. Because the Israelis were attacked, they took even more land than was originally given to them from Palestine, and they still hold on to this land today. The Israeli forces won several wars, and each time they won a war, they took more and more land. Millions and millions of Jewish people are going to migrate to Israel. And if you take a look at the map, you'll see the Israeli flag with the Star of David and the colors of blue and white. Now, Tel Aviv is the capital right on the coast, and all this land is Israel in around the coast right there. Israeli wars in 1948 and 1979. In 1948, um, Israel fought for the war independence. In 1958, there was the Suez crisis, and basically Israel took the Suez Canal over by Egypt, took the Suez Canal from Egypt, and this was this was huge. Israel won. In 1967, there was the Six-Day War with Egypt and Syria. They attacked Israel, and in six days, Israel defeated Egypt and Syria, and Israel took